Felicity from Get Your Rock Out talking to the amazing Chris Jericho. How are you doing today? Uh, amazing. Thank you. Wonderful. Glad to hear it. Um, the last time we caught up with you guys was very, very briefly at Download Festival this year. Um, so can you give us a quick rundown of everything you've been up to since then? Well, it would take about 30 minutes to do that. But, um, <laughs> Download was a great show for us. It was one of uh, one of my favorite shows that we've probably ever played. It was a real kind of a career-defining moment. It was really cool to uh, see the reaction of the fans and also to see how many of them there was there. It was really uh, interesting to me because for about 30 minutes before we played our set, there was not a lot of people around. And, you know, sometimes it happens. You just have a smaller crowd. It was early in the day. So in the dressing room, I warmed up. When I came and walked out on stage about 30 minutes later, I felt like it was like some kind of a CGI had been done with all the people <laughs> that were there. There was about 30,000 people there. So um, that's the really cool thing about download is that people, you know, they'll, they'll walk around to go see the bands that they really want to see and that they're looking forward to checking out. And it was uh, it was amazing to, 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 to see how many people came and the, and the reactions that we had and it was a real groundbreaking performance for us in the UK, and it's just been kind of continuing on since then. Our new album, Sin and Bones, came out. It was the highest charting record of our career, the fastest selling record of our career. We did the Uproar tour in the States with Shine Down, which was the biggest tour we'd ever done in the States, and uh, just got rave reviews for that. And now we're getting ready to come back to the UK and Europe on November 22nd, I believe, starting off in Ireland. and doing Ireland, Scotland, Wales, England, Germany, uh, Switzerland, Netherlands. It's just uh, the list goes on and on and on. So we're really, uh, we're really excited to be coming back overseas again. Brilliant. I mean, I know here in the UK we can't wait to have you. And, it's you know, it's a cracking lineup for a tour as well. How did you choose the supports that you were going to have? Well, we did... Um we did a show with Soil in Wolverhampton, and it was just a, a great show. It was, it was a sold-out show, and um, great reactions from both bands. We'd never played with Soil before, but it was a real good kindredship with, with the guys. And um, plus, in in our uh, in our respective sounds, I think there's a lot of Fozzy fans that that hadn't been to a Soil show before. There's a lot of Soil fans that hadn't been to a Fozzy show before. And yet people were uh, were going nuts for both bands. So we kind of had a little light bulb go off and said, you know, if we're looking for a tour this fall, we should maybe think about going out with Soil. And, uh, you know, they have a lot of steam. New record coming out, you know, kind of just their new reunion with, with Ryan, their singer. And uh, it was just kind of a no-brainer. And when, when, when the, the offers came in, there were so many of them that we actually had to, like, you know, tell promoters, like, you know, slow down a bit. We've got too much coming in right now, so maybe we can do more sh more shows in the future, but for right now we've got a very full three weeks, and I think it's like six days on, one day off, which wow. is a singer. It's a tough schedule, but, you know, uh, people want to see us, so we're excited to, 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 be, uh, to be joining up with them, and I'm really looking forward to it. Brilliant. I mean, how do you kind of make sure that you do keep your voice in shape constantly? Do you have anything that you have to kind of follow before and after you do go on stage? Well, I mean, warm-up, very, very um, intricate warm-up before and warm-up after. Uh, you got to be careful with, you know, yelling and screaming and stuff in between sets, even during the show. Sometimes you, you have to know, know where you're at as a singer and know what your boundaries are. And also, too, unfortunately, there's not a lot of, uh, you know, partying and rock and roll that goes on, um, you know, after the show. I mean, you can have a few drinks, but if you're staying up until 6 in the morning and <laughs> drinking and smoking and staying out at clubs and all that sort of thing, you're going to pay the price, especially in November, December in England. You know, it's starting to get really <laughs> cold. It's wet. Yeah. So uh, you really got to be careful and cognizant at all times about your voice. So it's always a challenge to come over, over you know, to England in, in the fall. Uh, because of the weather, which is very, very easy to get sick in. And it's stuff you don't think about when you're the guitar player, but when you're the singer, it's like, okay, got to pack my scarf, got to pack my sweaters, got to pack my warm clothes. And, <laughs> you know, so uh, i got to think of things a little bit differently than everybody else in the band do. And you made a full-time return to wrestling in January this year, and January this year you signed with Century Media as well with Fozzie. I mean... It's obviously, it's been a manic year for you so far. Do you think you can kind of keep things carrying on at this pace? Well, I mean, 
absolutely not. And the reason why is I wasn't doing both at the same time. Uh, the reason why I came back to the WWE full-time is because we were recording Cinnabones. Bones. And when you're recording a record, which takes about eight months, you know, as a singer, I got about two weeks of work of actually recording for me because I do the vocals and I'm finished. So, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, I had about seven and a half months of, of, of downtime. So it was the perfect time to go back to the WWE, and I came up with a little bit of an angle, but knowing the whole time that as soon as Cinnabones Bones was released, as soon as Upper started mid-August, I'd be done and then be going full-time with Fozzie. And the way it's kind of adapted over the last three or four years is that uh, my schedule is based around Fozzie's schedule, and, and, that, and that's it. You know, I can't do both at the same time. I won't do both at the same time. I'm not interested in doing both at the same time. And as, you know, Fozzie gets bigger and, and, and grows, you know, by leaps and bounds, seemingly every, every, every week something new is happening, um, my time in the WWE gets less and less and less, and, and that's cool. Like when I was a kid, I wanted to be in a rock band and I wanted to be arrested. Those are my two dreams. And <laughs> wow. now that Ozzy is, you know, going so big on a worldwide basis, I want to put as much time as I can in, into into making this other dream uh, grow. Wonderful. I mean, Cinnam Bones has had just rave reviews from pretty much everywhere I've seen. Are you completely happy with the fan reaction to it so far? Well, completely. I mean, when you do a new record, you want, you know, you want to do the best one you can, especially for us, knowing that it's our first uh, record on Century Media, which is the biggest record company we've ever been on, you know, um, getting ready to do the biggest U.S. tour we've ever done. So we wanted to make it the best record we'd ever done. And Rich and I thought that we had written the best record. And, and you know, when you're recording it, you're thinking, oh, this is great, this is great, this is great. But then once you let it go out into the world, it's a little bit scary because you're like, I, was, I hope everybody else feels the same way that we do. I mean, I hope everybody else thinks this is the best record that we've had as well. And then, you know, you're a little bit nervous and the reviews start filtering in, but the reviews are just over the top great and the response has been great. Like I said, the sales, the chart position, the reactions, uh, it really is the record we needed to make and it's such a huge stepping stone forward from Jason Grail, which was a huge stepping stone forward from all that remains. So, like I said, there's a lot of great forward momentum going on for us, and Cinnabon is definitely leading the way for that. So we're really, really happy with how everybody has received it. Wonderful. And you kind of collaborated with M Shadows on Sam Paper, and that, of course, has gone down amazingly well. What was it like to work with them? Well, we met with Avenged a few years ago. We toured with them a little bit last year on Uproar when we did a, a few shows, and Matt and I just got along really well. Just very kindred spirits and, and a lot in common and just became really good friends. So when, when Sandpaper, we were recording it, I wanted to do a little bit of a call and response to the Cat Scratch, Whiplash, Witch Hunt, and Black. So I thought I'd call Matt and see what he thought. He, he loved the song. He loved the chorus. Um, he was a Fozzie fan from, from Jason the Grail to begin with. So uh, And then he's, he actually had some ideas for the arrangement of the song. So it wasn't just uh, vocally how he contributed, but also... You know, like I said, on an arrangement side of it, made it a more streamlined, uh, flicker type of a song. So he really went above and beyond. And obviously, to, to have him involved with his name, it was just a, a huge yeah. deal. Um, and that was always earmarked to be one of the singles. But when when it actually came through that way, it was just like, oh my gosh, you know, <laughs> gotta have you know this be the single. And that's just opened so many doors that a lot of people, you know, might not might not have listened to to the song without Matt's involvement. Uh, a lot of the Venge fans don't really know Fozzie. Now they do. There's a lot of similarities between the two bands. I think it would be a great tour together, to be honest with you. I think there's a lot of similarities in terms of music. But yeah, the, the single just keeps growing. It's like uh, number six on the Octane series, the satellite radio countdown. It's number 49 on all active rock radio. It keeps growing every week. And the video just came out, which people are going nuts for, that Shadows is also in. So... Um, like I said, being involved with him, the collaboration was great, not just uh, professionally, but also personally. It was great to have him involved as a friend. Wonderful. And is there anybody that you kind of think, I really, really want to work with them in the future, and, you know, I kind of give my right arm to, to collaborate with them on something? Well, we've always, we've always had cool collaborations. I mean, Phil Campbell from Motorhead played the solo, and she's my addiction on this. Uh, we had Jeff Waters from Annihilator on a couple songs on the last record. We had Zach Wilde and... Mark Tremonti and Miles Kennedy, Marty Friedman on, on the All That Remains record. So we've always had collaborations, but it, it only, only if, it, if, it, if it fit. 
So I would never say, oh, I would love to do a collaboration with, you know, Bruce Dickinson and then, you know, have nothing for him to do and just force it, you know. It, it, when we do a song, we always know, like, oh, that would be perfect to have this person involved or that person involved. And, uh, you know, with Phil, Cal- Phil Campbell, he was, he's was he been a big Fozzie fan for a while and he, he's been wanting to do something with us for a while. And when we came up with She's My Addiction, it's such a Motorhead-style song that, I knew he'd be perfect to do the solo on it, so I called him up and he, he did it. So it all depends on what's right for the song and what's best for the song. But we have a lot of friends and a lot of mutual supporters and, and mutual respect for other musicians, so I'm sure we'll do other collaborations in the future uh, if it fits. Brilliant. Well, I'm sure we'll all look forward hugely to hearing them. Um, and as you said, your video for Sandpaper came out just a few days ago. And, you know, again, the response has been brilliant so far. It looks like it was just brilliant film did you enjoy the whole kind of filming process yeah it, it uh, just kind of started from one idea to another and just came up with this this there was an american movie called evil dead that we kind of based the whole concept off of and the director sean McEwen got it right away we found this really cool cabin in the woods and <laughs> just got off to it and uh it really is an awesome homage to evil dead i don't think it's really been done before and it's a really cool vibe for the song. Like I said, having Shadows involved, he didn't get involved until after the video was shot, so we kind of had to figure out a way to, to insert him in afterwards. But, you know, once again, that worked a lot, too. So I think it's just a really fun, cool video. And if you've ever seen Evil Dead, you'll get it right away. And if you haven't, it's still a, a pretty cool uh, pretty cool video, for sure. Brilliant. And obviously, you're hugely involved in, well, pretty much everything. And you're big into the TV side of things uh, as well. And you were recent, well, recently-ish on Dancing with the Stars. Is there anything that you kind of draw the line at and say, no, I wouldn't appear on that? Or are you pretty much game for anything? No, I mean, there's a lot of things I've said no to. To me, it has to be right. I mean, I don't have any boundaries on myself on what I want to do creatively, but um, there's a lot of things that I've said no to. If I just feel like I wouldn't be able to do good at it or just was interested in there's like a there was a... I think it's pretty popular in England, the, the celebrity skating show, ice skating show. Yeah. I said no to that. I said no to the uh, uh, Donald Trump Apprentice a couple times. Uh, wow. There's been some, some, pretty, some pretty big shows I said no to, but uh, if, I, if I agree to something and do something, you know I'm giving a 1,000%, and that's, uh, that's kind of how I am for sure. And can you ever see yourself retiring from the public eye and just doing something completely different, or do you always want to be doing this sort of thing? Uh, this is what I do. I'm an entertainer. I'm in show business. So, uh, completely retiring from the public eye, I doubt it. Um, you know, maybe different parts of that, of what I do for sure. But as far as being an entertainer and always uh, being involved in show business, I don't think I'll ever stop doing that, nor do I want to. Well, that's good to hear. We've heard rumors about a third book that you're currently working on at the moment. How true are they? And if they are vaguely true, what can you tell us about it? No, absolutely true. Uh, working hard on it right now. I just started working on it last week, and it's just going to be the next the next step. I, I, I see my books as being a trilogy, so this is the third, uh, probably final chapter of that trilogy. You know, from all the stuff that I've done leading up to the present day. Brilliant. That's going to be a fascinating read. And do you kind of have a? I'm aiming to finish writing by this kind of stage, or is it just going on as it comes? No, it won't be done for probably another year or so. It takes a while to do these things. It's a lot of work. Okay, and heading back to the music side of things, um, Sandpaper has also just been announced as the Helena Cell theme song. Do you get much of a crossover when it comes to fans between fans of the wrestling and fans of the music? Um, yeah, well, you do. And the, you know, that's because of the Chris Jericho fans. At this point, fans like a lot of different things that I do because I, ha- I am a multifaceted uh, person. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of people that got into the WWE because of Fozzie, and there's a lot of people that got into Fozzie because of the WWE, and, and, and a lot of people that got into both because of Chris Jericho being involved, and that's cool. As long as they, as long as they enjoy my work, I'm happy. Wonderful. And have you ever had a fan do something utterly terrifying to you, or just that little bit creepy? I've been attacked by fans a few times and had a few stalkers here and there, but, I mean, that's kind of all part of being the public eye. You just kind of have to take it with a grain of salt and um, just move on, stay away from them. <laughs> wow. Keep, 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 keep a firearm on your person. <laughs> um, and you were, you've been 
quoted on Twitter not that long ago saying, heading out to the West to begin a huge new project, it's going to be amazing. Can you leak any details of what that's all about? Nope, you just have to stay tuned and see what happens. <laughs> but it's, it's really cool. I was on set yesterday, and it's going to be really, really exciting. So so it's something with a set. Well, that's good, and whatever it is, that's good to know. Yeah, you'll find out soon enough. <laughs> Brilliant. Well, I look forward to that. Um, and just to kind of round things off, the next six to 12 months, there's, you've got so much coming up. So what can we expect from you? Where can we expect to be seeing you? Uh, well, just like I said, the, the biggest project for us right now is coming back to the UK with Fozzie, and um, that's, you know, we'll hopefully get to do two or three tours on, on the Cinnamon Bones record, like we did on, on Chasing the Grail and all that remains, but um, November 23rd in, in Ireland it starts, and we're really excited, man. The UK has been a second home to us, it always has been, and um, these would be some, some really big crowds between us and Soil, and we're excited to tear the house down and, and uh play a lot of new tunes from Sin and Bones and a lot of old favorites, so we're looking forward to it, man. It can't come soon enough. Only only a little bit over a month away. Wonderful. And of course, you're in the rock stars say the funniest things very shortly, too. Yeah, it's my first spoken word show in London at the garage, and I'm really excited about that, and I think I'm just going to go on without any any preparation. I'm just going to go on there and just kind of talk and do a Q&A and tell stories, and I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to that as well. Brilliant. So the fans of you have got plenty of times and opportunities to catch you in the UK soon, which is wonderful to know. Yeah, all the information at FozzyRock.com, all the dates and all the info, and uh, on my Twitter at I am Jericho. And I'm just really excited. Like I said, I love the UK. I love England, and uh, I'm really, really excited to come back and, and play uh, play all these new cool songs and, and, and this great tour with Soil and Breed 77. It's going to be a blast. Well, we can't wait to have you back. Thank you Thank so you. so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Um, and, yeah, really look forward to seeing you in a couple of months.